Today is episode one with Dr. B. Welcome to the Harness Your ADHD Power podcast. If you're looking for a fresh perspective and actionable steps on hot topics from focus to follow through to self-management and more, you are in the right place. Welcome your host, innovative educator, coach, and psychotherapist, Dr. B. Hey there, ADDers. I'm so glad that you could join me today for my very first podcast episode. You know, I have a special surprise for you as part of my celebration today, because any of you who know me know that I love to celebrate. And I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Today's episode is going to be all about lifting the emotional burden of ADHD and offering hope. It is really, really important to have hope because that is what keeps us going, especially if it's real hope. So how much time do we have? Not much. So let's get to it. ADHD is probably one of the most researched yet least understood conditions of our time. Go figure. As a mental health professional with over 30 years in the field, what I've seen happen to the criteria, the diagnostics, and the treatment over time makes me really, really sad. I firmly believe that no one, no one should be left behind who wants a better life, especially when they're actively looking for help. You know, we're all in this thing together, this thing called life. You can call me old fashioned, I don't laugh. But having grown up watching Little House on the Prairie, you know, it didn't matter whose barn burned down. The community came together and they raised a new barn. No one was left behind. I've always admired that way of thinking. It's community thinking. So whether you're newly diagnosed, whether you've known for years, or whether you self-identify with ADD symptoms, there's going to be something here for you when you keep coming back. And just so you know, I'm a work in progress, just like you. I've learned a lot about how to make the most of my gifts and to quiet my challenges. And I know that you can learn how to do that too. You know, if you're carrying around the belief that you're terminally unique and that a better life just isn't going to happen for you, because after all, look at all the evidence. Look at all the evidence of your bad decisions or failures or half-finished tasks or your to-do list that list that has stuff on it from years ago that didn't even get started. Forget it. You are not what you do or don't do. You are more than that. You, me, we are not defective or less than people. We're human beings and we're just wired differently. And that difference is actually pretty cool once you have a different perspective and the tools that you need for your own success. You know, I could keep talking about how cool it is to live with a brain like ours, but if that's not your experience right now, that probably isn't going to serve you, and that's not why I'm here. I'm here to be of service. And just so you know what to expect, every episode will have no more than three important points, relevant stories, an action step for you to take, a favorite quote of mine, and starting in May, I'm going to be bringing guests to share their expertise with you along with my own. You know, I'm hoping that you're really as excited as I am. In this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at why it can be so difficult to have ADHD as an adult in today's world and why that is not your fault. And that doesn't mean that you're off the hook either. So listen up. The three points that I'm going to cover today is why many adults get missed as kids and then get diagnosed later in life why trying to explain ADHD to others can be so difficult or confusing, and why being a high achiever just can't happen with low level of self-care. But first, I want to give you a gift. That's right, I want to give you a gift, because remember I told you that I'm celebrating today? And I love to celebrate a lot. Big stuff, little stuff, all the wins, everything, every single day. And today, I'm celebrating the launch of my podcast show. So my gift to you is to help you to see the wins in your life. The big ones, the little ones, the things that you overlook, things that you think are no big deal and you don't celebrate, and how acknowledging and celebrating them can change your life. You heard me, can change your life. So let's start with your first win. You know, it's something that's already taken place and something that you overlooked as no big deal, 
You didn't celebrate. So what I want you to do is just take a moment and slow down your mind. That's right. Perhaps take a deep, relaxing breath and just pause for a moment. And I want you to take a moment and think about what that was. Did somebody pay you a compliment? Maybe you found some money. Maybe you actually followed through on something important and you finished it up. Or maybe it's something more basic like, did you get out of bed? Did you get cleaned up? Did you feed yourself? You know, all those things are wins in my book and deserve to be acknowledged and celebrated. So I want you to take a moment now and to give yourself a pat on the back or at least acknowledge the win and understand that it's a good thing. It's a positive thing because let's face it, if you don't celebrate the stuff that you need to do as well as the special stuff, how the heck are you ever going to get motivated or stay motivated to keep doing the stuff that you need to do? I wouldn't. And I doubt that you would either. And if you only celebrate when something's huge, that could mean that you're waiting a very, very long time in between celebrations. And that would be really sad. Life, to me, is for celebrating every single day. At least that's how I'm living my life now. There is at least one thing every single day that happens to each one of us that's a win. And you, just like me, can learn to see it that way, and you can celebrate it too. A while back, I created a mini course called The Magical Power of Wins. The course is based on the practice of sharing and celebrating wins at the beginning of every weekly meetup group that I facilitated since 2013. You know, the cumulative effect of this practice has been absolutely amazing, and I want you to have some of that same experience. The course normally sells for $27, however, is my gift to you today. You, my first listeners, I want you to have access to this course. That's right. It's my gift to you today for showing up to listen to my very first episode and leaving a thoughtful review or comment. Why? Because I really appreciate that you're going to do that. I want to be the best that I can be for you, and your feedback means the world to me. Or if I were to grab a line from the movie Jerry Maguire, help me to help you. Seriously, after you post your review, head over to my website for a copy of today's show notes and for your free gift. And thanks so much for celebrating with me today. This podcast is sponsored by Pure Potential with Dr. B. You can head over to drbarbaracohen.com and find the podcast show notes, great free content from Dr. B, plus programs and services. That's drbarbaracohen.com. Now back to being an adult with ADHD in today's world. So many feelings can get triggered in everybody that's touched by ADHD. Shame, embarrassment, disappointment, frustration, secrecy, or worse yet, the disbelief of those closest to you because it just doesn't make any sense to them. There's a lot of different reasons why this could be the case. And I'm going to share three stories with you today, as well as talk about your responsibility in this. That's right responsibility or your ability to respond since you're not off the hook here. And I hope at least one of these stories is going to resonate with you and be of benefit. So let's keep going. You might relate to Sue. She had a lot of challenges since she was a kid. She was a daydreamer. She was constantly late to her classes. She'd forget to turn in her assignments, lose important papers. You probably can relate. And you know, no one seemed to pay attention to these things. They just chalked it up to That's how Sue was as a kid. And right around seventh grade, Sue's parents, they took her to a psychologist because the problems were just getting really, really bad. More teachers in middle school, all kinds of different teaching styles, the requirements. Sue just couldn't keep up and just couldn't do as well. So the psychologist was concerned that Sue may have ADD or ADHD. I say may have because that's what many people heard back then. The psychologist didn't really make it real for Sue or her parents, and so it was kind of like the appointment didn't even really happen because the information wasn't really conclusive in the way it was presented. No new skills, no new strategies to help Sue, and no suggested accommodations at school. It wasn't hard to just continue to think that that's just how Sue was. Fast forward to Sue's upcoming 50th birthday. 
She'd been in and out of therapy for years. She'd read lots of books. She felt that she knew a lot about doing better in life, and she still wasn't. Her depression, anxiety, they were better, but she still couldn't shake the feeling that there was something that was missing, something that would raise her self-esteem, and something that would help her create a more successful life because it still wasn't happening. She was still having problems getting started with tasks and actually finishing what she started. She was still waiting until the last minute to get things done, whether she was at home or work. And the day-to-day necessities of life, she felt they were boring. And she was far more interested in things that were fun and easy for her. She loved art, she loved music, she loved poetry. She did not love paying bills or completing the paperwork that she received in the mail. In fact, sometimes she wouldn't even open up her mail for weeks at a time, months, and ended up being delinquent on bills, even when she had the money to pay them. Are you relating to Sue's story? So one day after lunch, over lunch, a close friend showed her a couple of books that she was reading that were helping her a lot, Driven to Distractions and Women with Attention Deficit Disorder. Her friend felt that both of the books described Sue too. Sue told her friend that she saw a psychologist years ago when she was a kid, that they told her that she might have ADD, and that that was that. Nothing more, so Sue just didn't think anything of it. But on her friend's recommendation, Sue got the books, she skimmed through them, and she cried. And then she got frustrated, and then she got overwhelmed because she had so many feelings about what it was she was reading in those books. And then she got angry, angry at the psychologist that she saw when she was a kid, who didn't make that definitive diagnosis or help her to get the help that she already needed when she was a kid. Sue was already grieving for how different her life could have been if she had known sooner. Does that sound like you? For those of you who like data and facts, as of March 2017, none of the states in the U.S. require any coursework about adult ADHD to get licensed. That means that you need to assume that a licensed mental health professional does not have training in adult ADHD unless you know that they do because you've asked them. So there's going to be a lot of diagnoses for depression and anxiety or OCD or other stuff when the underlying issue could be adult ADHD. And it's not diagnosed and it's not addressed because there isn't any coursework that is informing these people to know what they're looking at and what they're hearing. There's also no gold standard that's being recommended for diagnosing adult ADHD. None. And the most recent edition of the Diagnostic Manual, which is fondly called the DSM, and this time it's the DSM-5, it was updated in 2013. That was the most recent version, or is. And this is a manual that's used for the communication with insurance companies when claims are filed or when professionals talk to each other. But here's the deal. In this most recent version from 2013, they lowered the bar. They lowered the standards for diagnosing adult ADHD. And now there's less criteria than there were before to make this diagnosis. And there's no official diagnostic code for adult ADHD, only adult examples that are being attached to the kids and the teens code. So If there was going to have been an opportunity back in 2013 when they revised this book, it would have been to give an actual code for adults so that when people said things like, well, this isn't real, there isn't even a code, and things like that, you could say, yes, there is, and here it is. But that isn't the case either. How many times have you been told that you would forget your head if it wasn't attached to your body or called a lazy good for nothing or a huge disappointment by a boss or a friend, or that you just don't seem to care, or you would do better, you would do much better if you cared, but you don't seem to. Hugh heard these things and worse his entire life. You know, he worked his butt off every single day, trying to do his best, trying to get things done at work and at home, and he never seemed to be able to catch up. When he got home, he would chill out with some seriously needed downtime where he'd play video games for hours and hours would disappear and even little things at home weren't getting done. You know, everyone was fed up with Hugh, including Hugh. And he just didn't understand how could he focus for hours playing a video game where it was so very complicated and he could score exceptionally well other than he was interested in the game and he loved the competition. 
but he didn't understand why he couldn't do the same thing with day-to-day life and show that he was exceptional there instead of failing so badly. You know, he knew that being interested in stuff was really important for him so that he could be motivated. But it sounds so lame to say that, that he wasn't even interested in household tasks or his job, and therefore he wasn't doing the work that he was capable of if he were just interested. Hugh had not learned how to make his job and his life interesting to himself, just like the video games were for him. A few facts on this. You know, how we've defined and explained ADHD publicly doesn't make sense to those who don't live with it, and it doesn't make sense even to those who do. And we're not helping the non-ADHD population to walk in the shoes of those who do live with ADHD so they can understand the experience. We're not giving them real life experiences to really get a sense of what this is like. And how could you expect people to accept the story or the explanation that you can only do things that interest you and not do those things that don't? In fact, would you accept that explanation from someone? Probably not. You know, there's abundance of stories that are being shared all over the internet, which are actually very specific to that person. And when you take it globally, it can actually be damaging and potentially harmful when you put this global definition as if it's about everyone who has adult ADHD, because it isn't. You know, everybody's everybody's ADHD manifests differently. The symptoms, the response to medications if they're using them, other treatments. Some people are avid readers and they can focus on a book for hours, while others can't focus to read for more than a few minutes. Some can organize hobby supplies, like albums if they're a DJ, or their kitchen supplies if they're a a cooking person, yet they can't organize other areas of their life. These contrasts in ability are extremely confusing, both to the person living with ADD and to the other people around them. Statements like ADDers can't, ADDers are, aren't, and stuff like that, rather than saying, in my experience, Because again, if we're making these all or nothing black and white statements, they're gonna be damaging and people are gonna get hurt. Look around at how many people are taking care of themselves today. Sleep deprived, fast food diet, sodas, alcohol, very little consistent physical activity, and maybe occasional time for hobbies or friends. Tina had such great ideas and high hopes for being a high achiever. Unfortunately, she didn't have a model for what it was that she really wanted and what this really means. No one in her family was a high achiever. She'd read books about being a high achiever, and the books mostly talked about the business end of things, not what she had to become as a person, a person to be a high achiever. So she kept working really, really hard on her business stuff, but not on herself. She wasn't getting ahead, and she was really seriously burning out on energy and enthusiasm. The other piece that was missing for Tina is what high achievers are thinking and believing that allows them to do what they do. You know, this is really an inside job. It's not just what we see on the outside. How is she going to find out what these people are doing on the inside? She could only see the outside stuff and it wasn't enough for her to change her life. How could she expect herself to do well? when she didn't know what she needed to be doing on the inside, what she needed to be thinking and when she needed to be thinking it or feeling it, or what were the questions that she needed to ask about her needs? She just didn't have this information. Being a high achiever has a price tag. The cost is time, effort, and energy. And the tools of focus and follow through and self-management, they're all essential. Our minds don't come pre-trained for high achievement. They have to be shaped, they have to be conditioned, they have to go through training in order to become this and be able to produce this for us. It takes great ingredients to produce great results. Poor ingredients just can't get you the great results that you might want. And there's many people that would say that they want a better life, but most aren't willing to do what it takes to have the better life that they want. They aren't willing to invest in themselves and pay that price tag, that price ticket, of what that life cost. You know, we have to have a certain mindset that's open and willing to make whatever the changes are that are gonna be necessary for us to have what it is that we say that we want. And if we don't develop that particular mindset where we're open and we're willing, then it's just not gonna happen. How could it? So here's my action step for you today. 
It's your responsibility to get the information and the training that you need. In other words, it's your ability to respond to your needs and to meet them. You do have the ability to respond. It may not be the way that you want to respond, and it may not be what you like right now, and you do have the ability to make a response, and it's going to be the best response that you are able to make now. What it takes for you to excel and thrive is going to be different from what it is for other people. Even if other people are also the people you're comparing yourself to who also have adult ADD. And what do you understand about your own basic requirements that are essential for you to live well and for you to do well? What about your sleep? What about physical activity, nutrition, hydration, downtime, structure, accountability, rituals, rules, on and on. I could go with this. What do you really know about yourself and what it is that is required for you to be and live as the person you want to be? And then we can get to focus. What do you know currently that you can focus on for any length of time, hours, and follow through? What do you know that you can follow through on without any reminders, any prodding, any pushing, any threats? What is that? And self-management. What areas of your life do you already manage well? Because there are some even if you don't think those are the ones that we should be talking about right now or the ones that are important to the rest of the world, there are areas of your life that you do manage well now and you need to know what they are. Because once you know what you can focus on and why you can focus on it more easily than other stuff, you can use this information to help you to focus on the less easy stuff. And once you know what it is that you can follow through on without being pushed, without being threatened, and why this is so, you can use this information to help you to follow through on other stuff. And once you know what allows you to manage one area of your life really well, you can also use that information and that knowledge to help you to troubleshoot the difficult ones. So these pieces of information on focus and follow through and self-management, you need to have the information of what you're already doing well, regardless of it's the most important areas of your life. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about getting some information about what you do that you do well in these areas so that you can use that information for the areas that are troubling you. Here's my favorite quote for today. Albert Einstein is said to have written, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it'll live its whole life believing that it's stupid. The question that I have for you at this point in our journey together is, what is your genius? As we're getting close to the end of our time together, I want you to know that I appreciate you showing up to listen today and in the future. New episodes are going to be available once a week on Mondays, 12 noon Pacific Standard Time. I'm going to be talking about such compelling topics as perfectionism, analysis paralysis, procrastination, managing yourself within time, and more hot topics, as well as lining up guests to bring you more great insights. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and keep coming back. In fact, if you receive value today, please leave a comment or a review on iTunes so I know that I'm meeting your needs. That really means a lot to me to know that your life is getting a little bit better every time that we get together. And then make sure to get over to my website to get your show notes and your free gift. Thanks for your undivided attention. If you're hungry to make positive changes in your life, head over to drbarbaracohen.com and see how Dr. B can help you today. Whether you love making changes with one-to-one attention and community support or on your own with self-study or could benefit from coaching or psychotherapy, you'll find all the information right there at drbarbaracohen.com.